And now, here's Happy Caldwell. Hello, and welcome to our broadcast. We began a message last week that I recently taught at our church. The title is The Dispensation of the Redeemed. When you become born again, you become the redeemed. That means your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but you are living as the redeemed, a new species of being that never existed before right here on this earth. There will come a time when you will be in charge. You will be ministering with Jesus in the dispensation of the redeemed. Be sure and get this message. We're starting the new year with a lesson on your identity in Christ. That's today's broadcast. But before we get into the word for today, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song. If you need healing or deliverance while she sings, the anointing is there to minister to you. Here's Jeannie. She sings to the glory of God, my father. See you. 
to the three. beautiful voice is unforgettable. Thou art welcome in this place. Her inspirational songs are timeless. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer, To the anointing. It's the anointing that really makes a difference. Every song makes you feel in his presence. Stand your ground against the devil. Stand your ground in the Lord. Best Don't loved be hits, Lord. hidden classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom. CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Jeannie Caldwell are sold. And now, here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. The fall of man did not change the plan of God. You got to know this. It merely delayed the fulfillment of it. By the end of the millennium, <clears throat> innumerable people will have been redeemed. Israel will have been, been redeemed. Anybody that recognizes Jesus Christ as the Son of God and what he did on the cross at Calvary can be redeemed. Innumerable people will have been redeemed by the end of the millennium. And glorified as immortal beings to help God administer the affairs of the universe and all coming generations. Thus, the dispensation of the redeemed. The earth's government will be administered by the redeemed and will succeed forever. And we are the first fruits of redemption. The Bible says, and we'll read it in a minute, Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. He's the first fruits of redemption. And then in order, we all come in there. Your number's in there. My number's in there. Keep in mind that after the rapture of the church, which can take place anytime, while we're in heaven experiencing the marriage supper of the Lamb, Judgment seat of Christ where we receive our rewards. The earth is going through the great tribulation. Not recession, not oppression, not depression. The great tribulation. And during that seven years, we're going to be in heaven enjoying. And after that seven years, we come back with Jesus. That's what is normally called the second coming. Because in the rapture, Jesus doesn't touch down. Nobody sees him. We rise to meet him in the air. The second coming, or the second advent, if you please, is when everybody sees him. And that helps you understand scripture when you know the difference between the rapture and the second coming. The second coming, Jesus comes back. We come back with him. There's war. Satan. And all of his cohorts are defeated, bound for a thousand years. The millennial reign takes place on planet Earth. Then after that, Satan and his angels are loosed for a season because everybody that comes out of the great tribulation into the millennial reign is going to have to decide whether they're going to choose Jesus or not. Because during the millennial reign, Jesus rules with a rod of iron. Nobody 
rebels. Satan's locked up, bound. But after that thousand-year reign, if there's anybody that has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord, they're going to have to make a decision. So there are going to be natural people born into the earth during the Great Tribulation period, during the Millennial Reign, and then when all of that has been completed, then we go into the next dispensation, which is the dispensation of the redeemed, where you and I are going to rule and reign with Jesus forever. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, 20. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam we all died, and Christ were all made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. So our number's in there. Christ is the first fruits, afterward. Those that are Christ's, I'm in there. You're in there. Let's go to James 1.18. James chapter 1, and let's look at verse 18. Of his own will he begat us, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Romans 8:22. Romans 8:22 and 23. We know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption the redemption of our bodies. You see, our spirits have been redeemed. Our mind is to be renewed. Our bodies will be redeemed. All you have to do is be honest and you know your body has not been redeemed. <laughs> but it will be. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For the sake of time, we won't read all of it. But he begins to show if we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, I'm reading verse 3, of 2 Corinthians 5, 3. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that which we would be, that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for this selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. Then he goes on to say, you know, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Now go to Revelation 2. This is where it gets really exciting. Revelation 2. Keep in mind, we're talking about the dispensation of the redeemed. You know, we sing a song. Jeannie recorded a song on one of her CDs. I, I am redeemed. I'm the redeemed. The church triumphant. The redeemed. And my suggestion is that you start thinking of yourself that way. You're the redeemed. There's no category uh, of people like you. You're a new species that's never existed before. Revelation 2, 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saying he that receives it. Nobody is going to know this name except he that receives it. And this is, this is the name that Jesus has given to you. Now, Jesus it has many names. Go all the way back to the Old Testament. Isaiah, he's called, uh, even the prophecies about him being born. He's the uh, uh, counselor or the uh, 
government will be upon his shoulder, Prince Mighty God. And, and, and then in Revelation, it talks about him ha, uh, on his head will be written the word of God and on his vesture dipped in blood. I mean, he has many names, but you're going to have a new name. And I think I know what it's going to be. If I don't, You're, in, you're entitled to be wrong, just like I am. <laughs> Revelation 3.12. Revelation uh, 3.12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Now go to Revelation 5, verses 9 and 10. Now this is when, this is the church is in heaven. And they're worshiping the Lord. And the four elders are, are worshiping God. And they're grieved because no man in heaven and earth is able to open the book and they wept and, 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 and here Jesus stands. A lamb as it had been slain. Let's start with verse 8. And we did take in the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lambs, before the lamb, having every one of them harps, golden vials, full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. And to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. And made us unto our God kings and priests. And we, can I insert, we the redeemed shall reign on the earth. I think I know what that new name is, the redeemed. Now, if I'm wrong, you can look me up. <laughs> it, it really won't make any difference if I'm wrong or not. But that new name that he's going to give you is the redeemed. Do you realize how special you are? Do you realize how special... You are in the plan of God. You are the redeemed. You are the first fruits. Now, let me close this with Matthew chapter 24. Just so we can set everything in order. Matthew 24, verse 3. And as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now notice, they wanted to know what would be the sign of his coming. Not signs, not plural, sign, the sign of your coming and the end of the world or the end of the age. And the whole 24th chapter of Matthew is given to answering these questions. The first thing Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many will come in my name saying, I'm Christ, I'm deceived many. And you hear of wars, rumors of wars. There have been wars ever since Satan was cast out of heaven. That was the first war. It says that. There will be wars and rumors of wars. We still have that. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, will be famine, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. Have we had that? Wars? Ethnicities against ethnicities? Homosexuals against heterosexuals, heterosexuals against homosexuals, pro-life against pro-death, pro-death against pro-life, black against white, white against black. 
Islam against Christianity, Christianity against Islam. Are we seeing all that? But what's the next word? All these are the beginning of sorrows. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> this is the beginning. Now, what is the one sign? And I taught this many years ago, and you might remember this. The one sign, not all of these events that are taking place, but the one sign that he says is going to earmark the sign of his coming and of the end of the age is found in verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Go to Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38. Certain of the scribes, the Pharisees answered, said, Master, we would see a sign from you. He answered, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. What was the sign of the prophet Jonas? Now, there are two meanings here, but I want to deal with the one meaning. Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, social son of man, be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they re repented at the preaching of Jonas. Underline the word preaching. They repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So the sign, Jesus said in Matthew 24, is that the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Notice what he said this sign of the preaching of the gospel was about. That we were to be a witness. A witness of what? A witness of Jesus. Death couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't hold him. Satan couldn't hold him. Religion couldn't hold him. Nothing can hold him. He's alive. And there's not one thing that anybody can do to do away with that. We're to demonstrate that witness. We're to tell everybody we know. Thanks again for watching. I want you to really be ministered to by the message. I'm going to tell you at the end of the program how you can get a book that will help you in your identity with Christ and your authority as a believer. We get prayer requests here all the time. A viewer has written in for prayer and said, I need prayers for my family. We lost my dad recently. I've struggled with anxiety for a while, and now it seems to have gotten worse since his passing. He was 86 years old, and now I have this pinching, tightening feeling in my chest that occurs from my living with anxiety, which I believe I got from my dad. Going through something physical on top of my dad's death is hard. Going through something uh, that I believe is even harder for me because I was watching my dad die right in front of me. Here's my need for us to be able to find acceptance and move forward. My faith has been a little shaken after this. We prayed for healing for my dad for a while and didn't get the results we hoped for. I know God's plan is better but it's been a little discouraging and I want to be 100% rooted in my faith, but I'm struggling. Would you pray for me? Yes, I will. And there may be others watching right now that could benefit from this. First of all, your dad is in your future. He's as much alive today as he's ever been. He just doesn't live on this earth. Now, what you have to do is release him and let him go and not be anxious and not be worried. Your dad lived along and full life. Now let me pray for you. Father, I pray for my brother and my sisters right now. And I pray that you would deliver them from this torment. The Bible says fear has torment. So I command the spirit of fear to loose my brother and sister and let them go. I set them free by the power of the name of Jesus. Now, Father, comfort them. 
They know where their father is and they'll see him again. But I ask you to comfort them and minister to them. I bind the spirit of grief and command it to loose them now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report that you want to share with me, you can email it to me at happycallwell at vtntv.com. You can also call 1-800-264-2525 and send in your prayer requests. In fact, I'd like to hear uh, from this viewer as to how God set you free. Amen. Now, here's the product offer that I mentioned to you. It's called Believer's Authority, but it'll help you in your identity with Christ and as the redeemed. Watch this. From the beginning of creation to the ministry of Jesus and throughout the church age, no message has been more revolutionary, life-changing, or misunderstood than that of the Believer's Authority. Pastor Happy Caldwell has tackled this complex teaching in his new book and spirit-led Bible study, Believer's Authority. In this powerful duo, he reveals how you, a believer in Christ, can use your own kingdom authority to release God's healing power, set captives free from Satan's snares, overcome the spirits of fear, depression, and poverty, and perform miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. To order your very own Believer's Authority book and Bible study, call toll-free 1-800-264-2525. The book is just $14.99. And the Bible study is only $19.99. The spiritual battle is real, but through these powerful, time-tested scriptural principles, you can be a victor instead of a victim. I want to encourage you to get your copy of Believer's Authority. And don't forget to join Jeannie and me next week at this same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. You can watch today's show online. Simply log on to vtntv.com and click Happy Caldwell. If you'd like to order today's broadcast on DVD, you may call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. To contact this ministry, you may write to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call us at 501 223 2525. And be sure to visit us online at vtntv.com.